Tattoo Saima. You will wait a minute. She, she's there. Just know she's there. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Okay, so we're studying the Brihad Bhagavata Amrita and we're hearing about how Gop Kumar is traveling to different places in the higher planets in the universe. He had gone to the heavenly planets and he had become Indra. He took the position of Indra for some time. And then after staying in the heavenly planets for some time, he went to Maharloka, a planetary system above the heavenly planets. And on Maharloka, he saw how the residents there, the residents of Maharloka, worship the Lord by offering sacrifices. And he also visited another planet near Maharloka called Janaloka. And after staying there for Maharloka for some time, he met, he had, he, he, he saw uh, uh, the Sanat Kumar came to visit Maharloka. And when Sanat, Sanat Kumar came there, then Gop Kumar was attracted to go to the planet where Sanat Kumar lives.
So Sanat Kumar lives with the other three Kumaras, the four Kumaras, the sons of Brahma. They all live on a planet called Tapa Loka. So Gop Kumar went there to Tapar Loka and he saw how everybody on Tapar Loka was uh, like a young child. And they were, but they were very, they were not young, they were the oldest, they were very old. But their bodies had not aged. And they've spent all the time doing meditation. So Gop Kumar, when he first went there, they were all, they were discussing some philosophy. And after they finished their discussion, then they all went back to meditate again. So Gop Kumar, he wanted to find out where, where is the Lord of the Universe. So he was looking, he thought there must be the Lord of the Universe somewhere here on Tapaloka. On the heavenly planets, he, the Lord of the Universe was residing there as Lord Vamanadev. And on, on uh, Maharloka, the Lord is there in the form of sacrifice. So he was, he, he wanted to know where is the Lord of the Universe here on Tapaloka. So he asked some of the great sages who were there, who were doing meditation, where he could find the Lord of the Universe. So he came before these great sages and he offered obeisances and he offered prayers, but they did not even look at him. They, because they were already, they were all in samadhi. They were doing their meditation and they were in samadhi. Now remember, everyone on Tapa Loka, their, the whole lo their whole life has been celibate. They have no material desires and they have mystic powers. So this, sometimes they will discuss, they will have a meeting and discuss philosophy. But the, most of the time they just sit and do meditation and they're in trance. So Gop Kumar, he, he could not find out where is the Lord of the Universe. And because he was there in the company of all these sages in Tapaloka, 
he also he, he, he lost his enthusiasm to find out the Lord of the universe. But at the same time, he didn't stop chanting his mantra. Because he remembered his guru's order that wherever he went, he should keep chanting. And he was also, Gop Kumar was attracted by the special atmosphere of Tapa Loka. There was some very special power there. So even though the atmosphere there it didn't help Gop Kumar to want to see the Supreme Lord. So there was in that place, Tapaloka, where everyone was doing meditation, he could experience a very great peace, and that peace was also very blissful. And it, it, this encouraged Gop Kumar to chant his mantra with even more care and attention. Because everyone was sitting there doing their meditation, so he also was meditating. He, he was meditating on his mantra. So he increased, he got more desire, to, the desire to see the Lord increased in his heart. In the beginning, Tapaloka, it, it, it didn't help him to, to, to see the Lord. It, line voice breaking, eh? In, yes. in the beginning, Gop Kumar didn't have a the, the the effect of Tapaloka didn't encourage him to keep to want to see the Lord. But after he got used to the atmosphere of Tapaloka, then the desire came to want to see the Lord. Just like when you build a fire, when you're doing a fire sacrifice, so when you put ghee on the fire, it seems like the ghee in the beginning, it seems like the ghee is putting out the fire. But then the ghee starts to burn and the, and the fire builds up again. So Tapa Loka's atmosphere in the beginning, it, uh, it decreased Gop Kumar's desire, but then it increased again. So while he was there, Go, then while Gop Kumar was there, he had this desire, he was thinking he should go to Jagannath Puri to see Lord Jagannath again. Uh, 
Because he, he was feeling that the Lord of the universe is there in Jagannath Puri. He's always so wonderful, it's so nice to go and see. I Maybe mean, he thought I should go back there to see Lord Jagannath. So it was at that time, one of the sages there, his name was Pipalayana, he spoke to him. Pipalayana is one of the sons of Lord Rishabdi, who is an incarnation of the Supreme Lord. Rishabhadeva had 100 sons. And nine of the sons were great uh, devotees who never married and they just traveled and preached. So this Pipalayana, he was the middle son of the nine. He was the fifth of the nine. Yeah. These nine sons are known as the, the nine Yogendras, Nav Yogendras. Right? They're in the Srimad Bhagavatam in the eleventh canto. So Pipalayana, he had mystic power and he could understand everything which was happening in Gopkumar's mind. And he knew Gopkumar was thinking to go to Jagannath Puri to see Lord Jagannath. So he said to Gop Kumar, you know, that you've come here to this very special place. Why do you want to leave to go some other place? And, and why are you... Why do you desire to see the Lord? You want to see the sim Why do you want to see him with your eyes? So this Pipalaina, he thought, he, his idea is, is, you know, it's not a good idea to just use the senses like the eyes to see the Lord. Okay. Okay. So Pipalaina, his opinion was, it's useless to use the eyes to see God. Because God is beyond the material senses. So the Tapaloka is the place where all these great yogis have come and these yogis are completely, they have perfect control over their mind and senses. And the happiness on Tapaloka is millions of times greater than even the great sages on Maharloka. So why would Gop Kumar want to go some other place? So 
this is such a very special place. This is a very special place. So people lie in a telescope, Kumar, you should concentrate your mind in meditation. When you do that, then automatically you'll see God everywhere. And you will see God within and without. You see Him in, within you in the heart and you see Him outside of you all, always. And He's a person. So Gop Kumar may be thinking, well, if he goes to Jagannath Puri, he can directly see the Lord. But Pipalaina, the sage, he's telling him, just focus your just concentrate your attention within, concentrate on the heart or the mind, like that, concentrate within. Don't worry about using your eyes, going to see, use your eyes. Yeah. When you when if if he practices the meditation, then he will come to the stage of samadhi. And when you're in the stage of samadhi, the form of the Lord will manifest, it will appear to you. Without, you don't have to make any special effort. Just like when you pick up a mirror, immediately you see your face, you see the reflection in the mirror. So the same way if you do this meditation, you'll see the Lord. When you come to samadhi, when you're perfect in yoga and samadhi, then you'll see the Lord in your heart. Actually, the Lord is not, his body is not material. So you cannot see him with your material senses. So Gop Kumar was told, don't waste your time wandering around looking, trying to find him. So the Lord, the Lord in the heart is known as Vasudeva. And he has a form of eternal bliss and knowledge. And he reveals himself when somebody, when the heart is pure, then we will be able to see him. Yeah, Prabhupada often told us the same thing. There's only one qualification to see God. We have to have love for God. So the Lord Vasudev resides in the heart 
and he's the deity, he's the Lord of Consciousness. Uh, he reveals himself when we are qualified to see him. That, is, that qualification is we have to have pure consciousness, Krishna consciousness. Lord Shiva always meditates on the Lord in the heart. Lord Shiva always offers obeisances to the Lord as who is Vasudev, who is Lord Vasudev is beyond the material senses. Lord Shiva, yeah, did you get it all? Yeah? Yes. Mature consciousness. When we have full Krishna consciousness, then the Lord, Lord Shiva, offers obeisances to the Lord, who is known as Vasudev. Lord Vasudeva is beyond the material senses. But one can see him if we have pure consciousness. That means that we have no other desire in the mind. We only see the Lord, we only think of the Lord, we don't think of anything else. Material senses will never help us to, 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 to see Him. So when the mind is fully pure and no other thought, but the Lord, then we can see Him with, a, with, with our eyes, we can see Him in the heart. With our eyes? Yes, with, with our eyes we can see Him in the heart. Okay. Yes. We have to understand this. So this, this, the Pipalayana is describing what happens when you meditate. That we can act, that when we become, if you become perfect in the meditation, then with the eyes, we can actually see the Lord in the heart. The, actually what we're seeing is, what, is what, what's in the heart. So, the, the mind doesn't have any other thought except the Lord. With, so, in this way the Lord shows Himself in the heart. Actually, it's the mind which is showing us the Lord. But the, the yogi does not think that I'm seeing with my mind. So according to Pipalayana, the, this great sage, he's telling Gopkumar uh, 
the realization of the Lord becomes very vivid by yoga. We can actually see the Lord. We can see him by the power of the mind, not the eyes. Eyes have, are very limited what they can see. The eyes are material senses, so they cannot understand the nature of the form of the Lord. So the great sage Pipalayana tells more about the yoga process, the Gopkumar. And he tells them when the mind is happy, then all of our senses are also very happy. Because the, all the other senses, they're all included within the function of the mind. Yeah, Gop Kumar might be thinking that, oh, it's better if I can see the Lord with my eyes rather than just see him with the mind. But the sage Pipalayana is telling him, actually, the happiness of the mind includes the pleasure of the eyes and all the other senses. Just like when our, when our mind is distressed, when, we're, when we're, our mind is not peaceful, then the senses, they're also not happy, they're not satisfied. Yeah, because the mind is not happy, so the senses also, they cannot get any pleasure. So we should understand the connection between the happiness of the mind and the happiness for the senses. Yeah, the root, the root of all the senses is the mind. Just like when the root of the tree is watered, then all the leaves and branches, they get nourishment from the root. So when the mind is satisfied, then our senses, when the mind is satisfied, then our senses also feel satisfaction and they feel very happy. So most important thing is to make, fix the mind and make the mind peaceful and happy. So Gob Kumar may say, well, what the mind does, it, it's, it's not like what happens when we use our senses. It's different, you know, that the, 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 when we use our senses, just like speaking or touching or something, the, the, 
that's a definite experience, but the mind that, that is a different, different situation, it's not the same. So it appears like the senses are enjoying more than the mind. But this people lying us says no, it's not like that. People lying us said it's not like that, it doesn't happen like that. All the the power, the function, the act, actions of the senses are included in the action of the mind. Just like the things we do with our senses, it's only possible because of the action of the mind. It's the mind which tells us to chant the holy name. The mind tells us to go and see the deities. So the mind is very strongly connected there over the senses. The senses are under the mind. Yeah, yeah but if, we, if our mind does not function properly, then our senses are useless. So even though we may do things, we may do things mechanically, but it's like we're not doing anything. Yeah, we're, we may be doing activities, but it, it's because our mind is not focused on it, it's like we're, we haven't done it at all. Because our consciousness is not aware of it. So just like when we do chanting, if we chant without proper attention, we don't get the same benefit. When the mind is not attentive, if we're, if we're not controlling the mind, then the senses, even though the senses are doing something, we don't get the benefit. Because the soul, our consciousness coming from the soul is not get is not feeling it, not experiencing it. So each of the senses has its own object, right? There's the senses and there's the sense objects. Just like the sense of, there's the eyes and then there's the, the, the form which we see with the eyes. So the senses, they have to contact the object to do something. 
But something else is also required to actually understand that we're doing something. The mind also has to know about it and the soul also. Yeah, if our mind is not focused, if our mind is not un, in, un, under control, then we don't know what we're doing. So we don't get any spiritual benefit, the soul doesn't know what's going on. Mm. So chanting without attention is not going to give us the, the, the good, the full effect. So people lie now, this great sage, he's saying, just seeing, the, seeing God is that you, you don't have to take so much trouble just to try to see God with your eyes. You have to realize Him in the heart. We can, when we purify the consciousness, then we will see Him in the heart. The Lord is beyond the, he's beyond the, the range of our senses. You can't just use material senses to see God. Now sometimes, out of compassion for devotees, sometimes the Lord may reveal Himself. And they may be able to see Him with their eyes. But that vision, actually seeing Him with the eyes, that's also only possible by the power of the mind. We just imagine, the, the devotees just imagine that they're seeing him with the eyes, but actually they're seeing him with the mind. Of course, there were devotees like Dhruva and Prahlad and they were able to see the Lord directly with their eyes. So they are famous that they had how the Lord appeared to them. Why did the Lord appear to them? Because the Lord thinks that He's their Father. They think of Him as their Father and because of His affection for His children, He came to give pleasure to their eyes. But Pipalayana says, these devotees, they didn't just see him with the eyes, they saw him through their pure consciousness. Yeah, the eyes are very limited, they cannot understand many things. 
So did Dhruva and Prahlad, did they actually see the Lord with the eyes? Did the Lord come to them? And is the Lord, did he actually come to give, to did, did Krishna, did the Lord actually come to show love for his devotees? Does, does the Lord come? Does the Lord come to show love for his devotees? Mm. Yes, uh, actually the devotees, they, they don't identify with their own senses. They may, they may think, Oh, I'm seeing the Lord with my eyes. So they, they, they can understand the Lord is very kind to them. But actually God is beyond the senses. But the senses, with the eyes, they're still useful. It's not that the eyes are useless. I mean, we, we, we need our eyes. But we should understand the limitations of the eyes. So then the people I says, he says, the Lord shows mercy by being visible to the eyes. But the pleasure of seeing the Lord is not just in the eyes. The pleasure of seeing him comes in the heart. Of course, Krishna, the super God, he can do whatever he wants. If he wants, he can appear to the devotee. But his mercy is for the for the, the is for the benefit of the soul, not for the senses. The Lord the mercy of the Lord he can he can allow the eyes to be able to see him if he wants. But the real purpose of showing himself to the devotees is to uh, please the mind, please their mind. Because it's from the mind that we experience real pleasure, we, we also experience pain, anxiety, everything is done, it's all coming from the mind. So the pleasure of seeing the Lord will be there in the mind, not just in the eyes. And even after the Lord disappears, he may become visible for a short time and then disappear, 
So that, but the pleasure which is in the heart will still be there. So it's really the mind which is getting the pleasure. Uh, but the devotee may think, oh, with my eyes I saw God, I saw him right before me. So he'll feel some pleasure, some bliss will be there in the heart. But there's no pleasure in the eyes. No, because he's no longer present to the eyes. So we, we don't actually see him with the eyes, it's actually with the mind one actually sees God. Hmm. You know, the eyes are one of the is they're one of the five knowledge acquiring senses. Right? Just like we have the, the tongue and the ear and the nose and the skin and the eyes. So why are we, why are we not able to get, why are we not able to experience this uh, real pleasure, like the mind, from the from the eyes? Because it's not the purpose of the senses. The real, the pleasure is there in the mind. The mind is compared to the very close servant, secretary of a king. Just like the, the, the secretary of the king, he's always with the king and if the king has anything valuable, he will give it to the secretary to take care for him. So the mind is like that in relation to God. in relation to the soul. So when the mind becomes peaceful, then we experience more pleasure. Our senses may not feel any special pleasure, But the mind feels that peace, and so the mind is happy. Right. Now somebody may say, well, the mind is also limited, There's so many things. That, no, you say the senses are limited, but the mind is also limited. Yeah, that, it, that is true, the mind is limited. 
But when our mind becomes pure, when we get rid of all the material desires and the contamination from the mind, then Krishna is satisfied, he's very pleased and he gives his mercy. Then the pure consciousness of the soul becomes reflected in the mind. We're able to see the Lord in the heart. But our senses, our bodily senses, are not able to do this. So when when God, when the Lord, when He gives special mercy, one can see the Lord in meditation, just like seeing Him with the eyes. Then Pipalaya gives an example. He said, just like Lord Brahma, when Lord Brahma appeared from the lotus flower. So, we may think that one gets more happiness from meditating on the Supreme Lord than from trying to see Him. You know, we may, we may respect the sage because this sage is saying you get more happiness by meditating on the Lord than actually seeing Him with our eyes. But we also know that when we actually see the Lord, just like in the temple, when we actually, that we can get special happiness from Him. We can get blessings from Him, we can speak with Him, and we can have interaction with Him. So, so people I and I says, yeah, maybe, like that, it can be like that, but when the Lord is within the heart, He also does these things. Yeah, He reveals Himself in the heart to give us blessings. And he can also speak with his devotees and he can touch him. Even though he's within the heart, he can do all this. Because he has special powers, he has inconceivable potencies. Just like what happened to Lord Brahma when Lord Brahma was meditating. 
As described in the second canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Brahma was supposed to do the creation, but he did not know. He, he was supposed to do creation, he didn't not didn't know what to do. But then he heard a voice, a mysterious voice, told him to meditate. So when he did his meditation, after some time, then the Lord revealed himself, and he also revealed his own abode. Yeah, Lord Brahma saw the Vaikuntha, the spiritual world. The, the, the spiritual Vaikuntha is there's no misery and there's there's no fear of any kind of material problem. And so in Brahma saw in Vaikuntha, there's the Lord of Vaikuntha, Lord Narayan. And the Lord has his consort with him, the Goddess of Fortune. Haribo? Yeah? Did you hear? You, I was just saying the Lord has. You, you, you mentioned that uh, the consort is with the Lord. Yeah. Right? And Brahma saw how the Lord had all of his associates with him. And he appeared before Lord Brahma and he told him he was very satisfied with him. And when Lord Brahma saw the Lord Narayan, he was feeling so much happiness, he was shedding tears and he was in ecstasy and he bowed down before the Lord. And Lord, Lord Narayan was so much satisfied with Lord Brahma that he shook hands with him. Yeah, and, and, the, and the Lord also encouraged Lord Brahma to do the work of creation. So this is all described in Srimad Bhagavatam. So this past, the, in Srimad Bhagavatam, it shows how Brahma meditated on the Lord in his heart. And the Lord appeared to him. And he spoke with him and he gave him blessings and he touched him. This was all due to Brahma's meditation, in his meditation. So, 
seeing the Lord in person, when if you actually see the Lord in person, it can give joy to devotees, but it, it's not like that for everyone. There are people who are not devotees. People like Kamsa and Duryodhana, they're not devotees. So when they see the Lord, when they see Krishna, they don't feel bliss. They feel, you know, they feel envy and they feel hatred and fear. So it's, it, it's a special experience for devotees, but it's not like that for everyone. The, that, this, to see the spiritual form of the Lord is uh, that that meant to please the senses. But there are demons who see the Lord in person, but they 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 do not feel they don't feel that pleasure. Just like there were two demons called Madhu and Kaitaba. There were demons and when they saw the Lord, they just felt more, more angry and more nasty and, because they were demons. They had that nature. They were always angry and they were always proud. And so they saw the Lord. They didn't feel love for him. So these demons, they don't get, they don't get any bliss. They, 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 their, their mentality, their evil mentality, stays the same. Yeah, there, there, there are people, devotees. They are mahatmas. But these demons, they are duratmas, they are called duratmas, meaning crooked souls. Mm, they have no devotion for the Lord. They, they just want to compete with him and try to take his position. So even though the Lord has so many wonderful qualities, they're not attracted. So different different people will see the Lord in different ways. Just like Kamsa, Kamsa was born in the same family. He's born in the Yadu dynasty as all the people of Vrindavan. They're in the same family, but Kamsa has a different mood from 
Nanda Maharaj and these people. The people of Vrindavan, they feel great pleasure to see Krishna. But Kamsa, he's, he doesn't feel like he just wants to kill Krishna. Devotees like Vidura and Bhishma, they get pleasure to hear Krishna speak. But Duryodhan, he doesn't feel that pleasure. Even though they, they're connected, they have some relationship, but Duryodhan, he, he, he hates Krishna. So then we have to understand the nature of the Lord that he, he gives ecstasy, he, he so special mercy on his devotees. He wants Krishna, well, the, the Lord likes to encourage the devotees in their devotional service. So in devotional service, uh, when we do devotional service, we can actually experience how powerful and how perfect the activity is. So we may wonder, if we do devotional service, can we make mistakes? Is there any suffering there? Will there be any suffering? And if we're actually in contact with Krishna, are we still going to feel suffering? Are we still going to have pain and like that? Yeah, suffering and pain, anxiety. So we should understand the Lord can do whatever He wants. Every, nothing is impossible for Him. If he wants, he can have a fire and there will be no heat from it. Yeah, he can hide the nature. So he, if he wants, he can, take, he can hide the nature of this material world. He, he can do this just to show people the power of devotional service. So the Lord's devotees, they experience bliss. They experience bliss all the time. So 
but not people who are not devotees, they don't experience the bliss. Yeah. It, they, they're in the same situation, but the devotees experience it one way, and the non-devotees experience it another way. So the devotees, they feel that happiness because they know that it's all the arrangement of Krishna, that everything is happening by his plan, by his arrangement. And seeing the happiness, seeing the example of these devotees, it will attract other people to be devotees. If Krishna wants, he can make everyone, he can have everyone experience the bliss of devotional service. But he can also make it disappear if he wants. Okay, we will stop here today. Are there any questions? Take Buddha only the Shen Yin. Okay, now, Shen Zai can. Now, now, can. Yeah. yeah. Do you understand? Not all of it, no. Yeah. The cry, uh, this uh, devotee asked that uh, the husband and wife, they are kind to each other. Um, the, uh, then how can we uh, be kind to each other but without attachment to each other? And the devotee, uh, they are, uh, if the couple is both well, yeah. devotees. Well, if they act, if they simply keep Krishna in the center, then that will be the the manner in which they can remain uh, without material attachment. The point is they have to be attached to Krishna. They have to see Krishna in each other. See Krishna in the heart. The husband has to think of his wife as a spirit soul, not just simply as a body. Mm. 
And the same way the wife has to see the husband like that. Then the attachment is spiritual. Okay, what's the second part of the question? What's the situation? What's the lifestyle or um, the actual life of a, a devotee couple? Well, they have to have an altar in their home and they worship Krishna. And then in the daytime, they go to work. And they, together, they move to Kirtan and they will read the books, discuss Krishna Consciousness. They will invite guests to come to their home. Like that. Shubhadra,吉宝曼大吉 让心意稳处于Krishna之觉之中,准备好了,得到启迪之后,就能够协助孤路传教,这种真诚和祈祷能不能感动孤路自己来到身边,或在梦中给予学生启迪呢? 谢谢。to many lectures and she knows that if uh, the student doesn't get initiation however uh, she, uh, she make endeavor to chant and reading the effect is not uh, that good uh, as good as after initiation mm -hmm. uh, to uh, progress in chanting and learning to steady the heart, steady the mind in Christian consciousness, and also to be prepared to assist Guru to preach after initiation, and in, in a very sincere and um, the prayer, will that move move the Guru to come automatically to the student or to reveal? Uh, or to in, initiate the students in the in the in her dream. <laughs> no, it's the duty of the devotee to come and to come to the guru and request the initiation. Uh, it's not in the dream that you get initiation. You have to come personally. You have to come and approach the spiritual teacher and request the initiation. If you're not able to directly approach, then you have to do it through other form of communication, by internet or by mail, write something. The spiritual teachers are not eager, 
spiritual teachers are not anxious to accept a lot of disciples. So if you're not anxious to get GD, to get initiation, the guru, then the guru is not anxious to give you initiation. If you want the initiation, you have to come and you have to express your desire before the teacher. Okay. Any one of the processes can purify the consciousness. Now, trying to become Krishna's friend or surrender everything are very difficult. But you are encouraged to give full attention to hearing and chanting and remembering. Remembering is a very powerful process of bhakti yoga. But before we can remember, we have to do a lot of hearing and chanting. To purify the consciousness. Okay, Shai Gawanti. Okay. Is it the mind of the soul? Yes. I, but we're working with them. You could say, you see, the mind, our, our spiritual body is not really developed. Our spiritual body is covered. So we, we're using our subtle body. We have to purify the, the subtle body. But 
so when he talks about the mind, that that talking about the the subtle body, not the soul, not the mind of the soul, but the subtle body. We use the mind, material mind, the subtle body. We have to fix that mind, control that mind. We're not yet on the spiritual platform. So it's not the mind of the soul. It's the mind of the, the, mind of the body. What's the second? The second one is what? The second one is the second question is that the mind in the transformation is the mind of the soul and the soul of the mind. The mind of the material mind after being purified will will the material mind. Combined with the mind of the soul, or the material mind will dissolve. Yeah, material mind will will dissolve, right? Right. It may go back into the Mahatattva. It may go into the Mahatattva. Or, or, as you say, purify, if we, if, if we can spiritualize the mind, if the mind becomes fully spiritual, then it doesn't need to go, you know, that matter can be made into spirit. There's different processes. So one, one way is the mind enters into Mahatattva, goes back into the material elements. The other way is the mind becomes fully spiritual. As you say, you, the, I, we don't know. Mm. The next part, 彻底净化后,甲果也完全消融了吗? After the complete, uh, purified completely, the false ego, ahankara, will also dissolve completely? Yeah, well, false ego can become pure ego. You cannot simply take away the ego. We purify the ego. Right? Get rid of the contamination. Purify the ego. So this samadhi, this yoga meditation is the process of purifying the subtle body. And then when, the, when the, everything is fully pure, when there's nothing, no contaminant, then we can see the Lord in the, in the mind. Well, 
the same, just like the mind, just like the mind and the ego, the question is, you know, if our purification, if, if we do full purification, then the intelligence can also be in the, it can be the spiritual body. Now these, these people are on Tapaloka, it's still in the material world. So there's still some material elements there in the material world. So when they go back to Godhead, go to the spiritual world, then they'll give up these subtle, the subtle body. Thank you, teacher. Are there any difference between the mind to feel Krishna or the heart to experience Krishna? What's the difference? No difference. May may you check it. The next question. What's the preliminary condition to to gain peacefulness? Well, we are ha we had Gop Gop Kumar. He had gone there to Tapaloka, so that environment was very peaceful. So the environment, the environment which we're in, that has a lot to do with getting peacefulness. In Krishna consciousness, we get peace by understanding everything belongs to Krishna. And seeing that, seeing everything is meant for Krishna's pleasure and that he's the best friend. So this way we get peace. Yeah, there has to be some detachment. You want to get peace. By association with a devotee. Demons can be made into devotees by a proper association. They need very special mercy. Oh. 
个人吗？嗯。嗯
下一个问题，杨改莲等在即，顶拜咕噜，感恩咕噜精彩的讲课，顶拜翻译，请教咕噜，感官是不是，感官是不是如同虚设呢？如果没有 Krishna 之觉，就相当于感官，就是处在黑暗之中，所从事的一切都没有任何的意义。这是第一个问题。哦、oh, ，I I I Romeo one twenty twenty four minute. Yes, she offer business to you, and her express her. Realization that is it the senses are、uh, force settles a、uh, force a、uh, force settling and uh, the, uh, if there is no Krishna consciousness so in the darkness so everything、uh, done by the senses are meaningless.、Uh, She confirmed this with you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. True. Is is true. Temporary. Everything done by the senses is temporary. Material. 下一个问题。第二个问题，既然格罗卡和白昆塔都是灵性星球，除了得到形体不一样，还有什么其他的区别吗？为什么还要创造这个白昆塔星球呢？白昆塔星球是不是比格罗卡低一级、低一个等级？在白昆塔星球上的生物体的形象，也是自尊主根据自己的意愿安排的吗？Yeah, they're different because the mood in Goloka is more sweetness, but the mood in Vaikuntha is more awe and veneration and reverence. I I I didn't understand all the question. What else did she want to know? Okay, because okay, so he created the Vaikuntha because it's different rasas. The, so the people who want the Aishwarya, who like the opulence, they're attracted to Vaikuntha. But Vrindavan is more sweetness. It's more village style. Goloka. Shati, Shati, you do. Forms in the Vaikuntha Loka. 
Everything is the arrangement of the Lord. He arranges everything because there's variety. There are different devotees and they have different desires to serve the Lord in different ways. And each devotee thinks his way is the best. And they're completely satisfied in serving the Lord, although they serve them in different ways. Okay. The eyes is a the The eyes is like the glasses of is it also the tool of the mind? Well, yeah, we use the, we use the senses. The mind has gives instruction, direction to the senses. So the senses act in different ways. Yeah, you could say like that. Yan Jin should sing the Gong Ju Kai Kai Shuo. Haribo. No, that's not true. Because whatever service you're doing for Krishna, that that will take that will help you after the initiation. It, it will be there in your spiritual bank account. You'll get the benefit of it. It's not a waste of time. Hi, Yuna. <laughs> By chanting Hare Krishna. We have to, because we're in the bodily concept of life, so you're looking at your mobile phone. But when we're in Krishna consciousness, you'll forget about the mobile phone. You just look at Krishna, you see Krishna. You just be thinking of Krishna and Krishna's service. So you have to do more chanting and hearing. And put down your mobile phone. Shall I go empty? 
咕噜咕噜顶拜您的莲花足，我想问一下。呃，每个咕噜知道所有关于 Krishna 知觉的知知识，呃，是 Krishna 直接给咕噜启迪的吗？没有，咕噜不知道的，<笑>我很好奇。我们学多少辈子，可能也学不到。嗯、呃，咕噜怎么就是却怎么都都知道呢？这个问题如果有冒犯，请咕噜谅谅解。还是 Krishna。No, the spiritual master has to get initiation from a spiritual master. He has to get. We have to. We take initiation not from Krishna, but we take from another person who is initiated, who has also been initiated by a spiritual master. We have the line of disciplic succession. Um, um, We don't get directly from Krishna. We don't get directly from Krishna. We don't get directly from Krishna. Well, Tobi is that's getting ready for the initiation, right? That's you, 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 you've selected the person you want to take initiation from, and now you're you have a probationary period before the initiation where you test each other. Tobi, but the time of Tobi, Tobi, ni, 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 you, can, you can change. You have not yet taken the formal connection, so you can change. You can select somebody else if you want. But after initiation, then you can't change. But you can take instruction from other people. Okay. Sati, Jintian Dao Jer, Kaima. How? Can she know? Shishi Guru Mani, Fichang and Shiniman, Lianga, Sati Guru Mani, give one the Madofu. How? Sophshan, how? Haribo.